been quite a bit of movement on housing. Uh, yesterday we saw the premiers and the, and the prime minister agree to this housing accord, if you like. There's a lot of money on the table. Do you broadly back this plan or do you have concerns about it? I just have concerns about uh, the, the viability of what they're talking about and, and the credibility. I, I've got no doubt that uh, Premier Malauskas, uh, if he's reducing taxes and he's opening up new land supply, that's going to make a difference. And uh, I think we should support that. But the Prime Minister promised in October of last year uh, that they had an aspiration for a million homes. They've now increased that after the discussion yesterday to 1.2 million. But, but he may as well say it's 1.5 million or 10 million. Uh, because they're not going to achieve the 1 million, they're certainly not going to achieve the 1.2 million, and I think they're just offering up a lot of false hope and promise at the moment. The fact is that under the coalition government at our peak, we had 149,000 new starts per year on a, on a yearly basis. That under Labor has dropped to 95,000. The number of first home sales uh, or new home sales uh, has dropped by 37 per cent in the last 12 months under Labor. So th there can be lots of good intent, as there often is, but as we know, uh, Labor just can't manage the budget, they can't manage money, they can't manage the economy, and they, they can put everything on their wish list, but they can't deliver, because they've had two budgets now to put in place policies that give you the economic settings that will encourage investment. Investors are fleeing the market because they don't want to invest under Labor because they don't know what new, new tax is coming next. Yeah, I've got to say, I'm a bit worried about the how. How does each state premier meet these individual targets? You already have a building uh, industry under pressure, but by the same token, we had one of your uh, ministers saying this morning, well, perhaps immigration uh, should be put on hold in the short term to take that pressure off the housing industry. Isn't that the opposite of, of what we need? Don't we need these skilled workers in here to build these homes? We've also always supported a balanced migration program that's well planned and the trouble at the moment I think is that uh, there's just not the planning in place. So you go to an auction now or you go to a real estate agent to try and rent a, a unit or a house, uh, you're in a queue and it's difficult to, as you know, many Australians know. Uh, if you're going to bring 300,000 people a year in every year over the next five years, a population bigger uh, than the city of Adelaide, then you need to plan for it. and. You need to do it at a time when if those people, 300,000, 6,000 people a week, are going to be joining the rental queues, you need to have the stock available because otherwise rents just continue to go up uh, and the stock is not there for people to buy or to move into if they're purchasing a home. So we're in support of migration. It just needs to be properly planned. And it's like the Prime Minister's promise to reduce your power price by $275 a year every year. Well, he's never mentioned that figure since being elected. So. I just think he talks a big game uh, and ultimately Australians pay the price for his inaction. Well, is the balance right now then? If we're talking about 300,000 migrants coming in over the next couple of years, call, call it three to five years, is that, is that right? Because we know that businesses are still crying out for skilled workers. Yeah, Laura, look, I, I think the, uh, the labour market uh, is in transition at the moment. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, speaking to uh, some big companies who have a retail presence in Australia, you know, a move away from meat into chicken, uh, no, you know, extras in the basket when they're turning up at uh, uh, at the checkout because people just don't have the disposable income. Uh, great to see a lot of women uh, going back into the workforce, but but the reality is that in many of those cases, it's because they just can't balance the budget under Labor on one income. Uh, even if you know the husband or the, or the wife is working two jobs, uh, the spouse has now had to go back to work as well, even if they've got young children and, and it wasn't their intention to go back to full-time work uh, because you know, they just can't put food on the table. Uh, in that market where you see a contraction, particularly in the retail sector, you'll see unemployment go up. And the government in this budget predict, predicts that unemployment will go up. So I think there will be a different picture in 12 months' time, sadly, than what we're seeing at the moment. So it depends on the prevailing economic conditions to answer your question as to what the right mix will be. Uh, it's not just uh, the skilled worker, but, but uh, unskilled as well in, in the current uh, environment where uh, you've got food, uh, you know, fruit and, and produce rotting on vines and uh, on trees that, that, that is, they just can't find workers to, to go and do that work. Now, that, that likely will continue to be the case 
uh, even if the economy sours further under Labor decisions. But uh, I think you'll see a very different picture in 12 months' time uh, than what we're seeing at the moment in the Labor market. Yeah.